Hello everyone. So this is actually the third time I'm recording this video because the first two times I tried to produce it I end up recording two long rant videos where I just complain about Kava's design without providing much meaningful content. At least not in a cohesive and well-formatted manner like I would prefer. Uh, that being said, in the world of Tevat, everything follows the rule of three. So this time, I'm gonna make it right. And without further ado, welcome to my video about Kavi. How Hoyoverse designed the perfect character and somehow made him bad. By now, it is no secret that Dendro is one of the best elements in the game. And team compositions that revolve around Dendro can also be some of the cheapest and least resource-intensive uh, teams to assemble, level, and build. In fact, Dendro is so good that being Dendro in of itself elevates the value of the unit. Take Kale, for example. On any other element, Kale's kit, this is obviously taking into account her special ICDs, would be subpar. But because Kale's elemental application is coded as Dendro, she becomes a decent option across many teams. And as you look into the rest of the Dendro roster, you'll start to notice how powerful the characters that belong to the element are. You have Tognari, an extremely powerful ranged single target quick swap DPS. The Dendro Traveler, which provides consistent off-field AoE Dendro application and buffs. Yao Yao, who is a very flexible healer, which can be built into various different ways uh, as a support for aggravate, spread, or bountiful core team compositions. Nahida, who provides some of the best off-field Dendro application and reaction buffs in the game, and who, in my opinion, shares the throne alongside Bennett and Singcho as the top three best characters in Genshin. Not because Nahida directly competes with them, but because she fulfills a different yet equally valuable role. Then you have Olhaitha, an on-field Dendro DPS, an on-field Dendro spread DPS in fact, who is arguably one of the best, if not the best DPS in the entire game. And finally, there is Baiju, who is an extremely versatile Dendro support that can act as an on-field driver or an off-field healer and Dendro reaction damage buffer and who, in my opinion, will only increase in value with the coming of Fontaine. Now, we have already established how powerful Dendro is as an element. So, what if I told you that there is a Dendro 4-star character that acts as an on-field Dendro unit, is a Claymore user, meaning his attacks hit in a wider range, has a smooth and relatively fast attack animations, has a 12-second uptime as an on-field Dendro applier with interruption resistance, and now, what if I told you this character also buffs the damage of Bloom, which outside of Nilo teams is Dendro's weakest reaction, by the way. He can cause Dendro cores to explode on command in an AoE through his elemental skill. He can self-sustain by healing himself every time he is damaged by Bloom, Burgeon, or Hyper Bloom. And he can also boost his own elemental master to increase his Dendro reaction damage. And what if I told you that all of that was at C0? And, what if I told you, that despite all of that, the character in question still underperforms. On paper, Kavi has the perfect kit to succeed. The perfect design to fulfill an uncontested role as a hybrid crit and bloom on-field DPS. And be good at it as well. So, why is he not? Now, before I continue, I wanna get this out of the way. I know that some people are going to say Kave is fine, he's just meant to be a Nilo Bloom driver, to which I would laugh and reply, Kave in a Nilo Bloom team, his supposed niche, brings as much value as a C6 Diona with 200 elemental master buff and healing. And Diona is not even meant for Nilo Bloom teams. Yes, Kave is not even best in slot, in the very mechanic that he was designed for. In fact, Bountiful Bloom teams, Kave provides nothing that you cannot get from another uh, Dendro or Hydro character. His healing from bloom damage is outstanding, yes. However, in Nilo teams, you tend to swap a lot between characters, and if you do not have a healer, your team will still die from the peripheral damage of Bloom's passively explosion. As for his bloom damage, well, the damage boost from his elemental burst, well, it's an additive damage boost to the elemental master damage equation, meaning that the bloom damage which Kavi provides is around a measly 1600 bonus damage per Dendro core with Deepwood Memories. And that is severely unimpressive. And another argument that I commonly hear is that we should not compare 4 stars to 5 stars. Which is inherently a fallacious argument since the number of stars should primarily dictate the rarity of the character and not his or her strength level. Furthermore, there are plenty of 4 star characters in Genshin which I can 
confidently point at and say that they are either as good as and sometimes even better than many other five stars. And this one is my favorite. Not every character has to be good, which I don't really understand the logic behind this argument. Like, sure, I agree, not every character has to be Bennett, Kazuha, or Nahida. A game the size of Genshin is about not to be perfectly balanced. But at the same time, that absolutely does not mean playing a not good character should feel like driving a broken Toyota Corolla E70 when you have a 2023 Lamborghini Hurricane that you can use right beside you. That ideology is illogical, and if you subscribe to it, honestly, you're simply just encouraging scummy game design practices. As a character, I absolutely love Kava's design, both in his story and his philosophy. In fact, I like the character so much that I actually C6'd him, and I got C1 Baiju as a byproduct of that. Now make no mistake, I'm not complaining about pulling a subpar unit, at the end of the day it was my decision to see 6 Kabe. And I honestly do not regret it considering that I really like the character and that I got C1 Baiju during the process of doing that. However, just because I like the character, that does not mean I will not be critical of his design. And this brings us to Kabe's main problem. Well, problems. He is both an energy black hole and his numbers are just too low to accomplish anything meaningful. Kava's Elemental Burst acts as his main Dendro Infusion mechanic and has an energy cost of 80. Now, energy costs would not necessarily be a major issue if Kava himself generated enough energy, but then you realize that Kava's Elemental Skill is on a 6 second cooldown and generates 2 particles per cast. This not only means that Kava at C0 can cause Dendro Cores to explode only once every 6 seconds, but also means that Kava can generate 6 Dendro Particles throughout his uptime. And I can guarantee you, and believe me, I've played this character a lot since his release. At C0 and at C6. Six particles across 12 seconds for an 80 energy burst will force you to run a tremendous amount of ER. Now, yes, his burst causes course to explode immediately, but that does not really matter since you optimally want to skill and then burst at the same time, which means one of the two will not have any course to interact with. I honestly think that Kavi's insane energy requirements are the main thing holding him back. If his burst cost was 40 to 50 energy instead, players would have a significantly easier time reallocating the energy stats into offensive stats like Elemental Master or Attack to boost Kavi's own damage. Alternatively, Kavi's skill should have been on a much lower cooldown not only to allow him to interact with Dendro Cores more often, but also to dish out more damage and generate more energy. Kavi's main gimmick as a character is the fact that he is supposed to boost Bloom damage. After all, his Elemental Burst, Skill, Constellations, and Passive are all designed around that. A gimmick that he shares with Neil. But the problem is, Kavi's buffs to Blooms are nowhere near as good as Neelu's. The latter not only causes cores to explode immediately, but she also super buffs the damage of explosions based on her own HP, while also increasing the radius of the explosions, which is extremely valuable in AoE scenarios. All of that makes the additional 1.6k damage that you get from Kave quite negligible. By comparison, Kave at C6 is stuck in this weird position where he embodies a mixture of both Elhatham's and Nilu's designs, but possesses none of their virtues. With Nilu, we already established why she does not need Kave in her teams, while with Elhatham, well, Elhatham just does significantly more damage, plain and simple. Kavi's multipliers are not only low, but his high energy requirements also work to exacerbate his existing deficiency. And the 49.5% bloom damage bonus he provides is not good enough, trust me. I kid you not when I say this, I tried every logical King Kong variation on him and most of them just do not work. And those that do are the ones where the other three units are simply far too good that they do all of the heavy lifting and carry Kavi along the way. In other words, they provide little to no value and can be replaced with a better option. Make no mistake, Kave's design as being a hybrid between Nilo and El Haytham is not one of his drawbacks. If anything, Kave's design is extremely interesting and his concept fulfills a role that does not exist elsewhere. While I understand that Kave cannot buff Bloom too much, since that would make Nilo teams way more broken than they already are, the fact that his damage boost only works on Blooms and Bountiful Blooms locks him into a specific category of reactions, and that on its own is fine, but now you have to improve those reactions enough in order to make them viable. One solution is that you could make Bloom Explosions triggered specifically by Kave skill with his own stats. Say, his crit rate and crit damage. And hypothetically, the Bloom that Kave triggers can crit while maintaining the overall Bloom damage boost that he provides to the team. But Blooms that he does not trigger do not benefit from his stats. This would not only allow Kave to capitalize on both his on-field DPS style while also boosting his Bloom damage to the team without making Nilo more broken, 
but it would also allow Kavu to double dip into crit and EM as a damage boosting stat for both his transformative bloom damage and amplifying spread damage, without having to invest into one and sacrifice the other. Which by extension further highlights his unique kit. Now, the Dendro cores do not necessarily need to crit, but at least their damage can increase more with crit stats that Kavi has. Keep in mind, these are all just examples. There are many ways to go about what I said. Furthermore, reducing Kavi's energy requirements by reducing the cooldown of his skill would benefit him tremendously. Again, Kavi's kit as a concept is extremely good, it's just that his numbers are either way too low or way too high in the wrong places, like his elemental burst being a 20 second cooldown and energy cost of 80. Kavi has all the hallmarks of a great design. His animations are smooth and clean, his aesthetics are good, his story is deep, and the idea behind his playstyle is extremely intriguing. And as I said earlier, on paper, he has the perfect kit to succeed. In fact, the concept of his kit looks so good on paper that for a moment I suspected that the balance team at Hoyoverse feared that he might be too strong and tuned him down accordingly. That being said, I quickly cast that idea aside since we are no longer in 2020. Kavi was designed in an era where Hoyoverse as a company is at its peak in terms of both quality of its development processes and the experience of its developers. Honkai Star Rail just came out and every character there is good at something. Furthermore, I personally trust that the developers at Hoyoverse know what they're doing. Now one could theorize that perhaps Kavi falls under the same boat as uh, Toma and Kuki, two characters who came out in Nezuma and were overlooked but ended up being significantly better with the release of Dendro and with the passing of time. In other words, they were designed with Dendro in mind. I talked about this theory in a previous video that I made, but if you look at the last 10 characters that came out in Genshin Impact, 6 of them are focused on defensive mechanics, and yes, I am counting Kavi. That, along with the release of enemies that can practically one-shot you under the right conditions, leads me to believe that Hoyoverse is preparing to shake up the gameplay and push Genshin in a direction where survivability is way more valuable. Perhaps in a new game mode in the future? Perhaps in Fontaine? Perhaps then Kavi will shine, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Now, it is worth mentioning that what I just said is basically investing into future impact, and that is... Not a sound idea, but I'm done huffing coping for now, and as a closing statement I wish to say that my primary intention from this video is to be critical of Kava's design rather than complain about his flaws, for the sake of complaining obviously. I really like this character, and while 36 starring the Spiral Abyss with him is always going to be painful and it's always going to be an enormous undertaking, I will still try my best to 36 star every Abyssal Moon rotation, at least one of them, just because I enjoy his quest. Uh, but what do you guys think? Did I miss something? Share your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. I personally find critical feedback and discussion extremely valuable, especially in topics like these. And alas, if you made it this far into the video, I want you to know that I greatly appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. I will see you in the next time.